Jehovah, it's a time to surrender. It's a time to give up everything to you. May you take over, Jehovah God. Take over our lives. Take over our business. Take over our children. Take over our homes. Everything, Jehovah, we surrender it to you this morning, Jehovah God. We surrender, we surrender, we surrender, Jehovah God. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Jehovah God. Jehovah God, we say thank you, we say thank you, Lord, we say thank you, Lord. We surrender everything unto you, Jehovah God. Yes, Lord, we surrender, we surrender, we surrender, Jehovah God. Yes, Lord, we surrender everything to you, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed this morning. Amen. I want you to go ahead and appreciate God as you surrender everything before Him. That which is below you. That which is before you. That situation that is before you. Surrender it to Jesus. That you know, my I don't know what you are going through this morning. I don't know what is your point of celebration this morning. As you stand It's a time to surrender. It's a time to surrender. It's a time to hand over. I encourage somebody to surrender everything that you have. Hand it to him, hand it to him, hand it to him, hand it to him. That which is tormenting you, that which you are going through, that which has been your mountain, that which has been your storm. This morning as we stand before the exalted altar of God, may you surrender it before him. May you live it unto him. May you live it unto him. May you allow him to deal with your situation today. Lord, we thank you this morning. As we surrender everything, Jehovah God. Even this service, oh Lord, we surrender it to you. It's not unto us, oh Jehovah God. This service we surrender it to you this morning. May you take over everything in this service, Jehovah God. Every word that has been spoken, every mind that shall be touched, every soul that shall be touched this morning, Jehovah God, we surrender them unto you, Jehovah God. May you do that which you have peoples to do this morning, Jehovah God. As we come before your own self to the altar, Jehovah God, we just surrender, we surrender, we surrender, we surrender everything unto you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Go ahead and take your wonderful seats and sit on your enemy wonderful and tell him that he will not arise for the second time as you sit on him. Amen this morning. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor and tell them you are welcome in the house of God. Tell them even you, my neighbor, I surrender you to God this morning. I'm telling you everything in this place today, we are handing it over to God. It is not your business to have anything to do with this morning. It is not your business to have anything to do with your challenges this morning. It is not your business, but just give it unto God. And when you give it unto God, God will come through for you this morning. Hallelujah. I surrender my voice and everything. I surrender everything that I have unto God and just God take over. Amen. I surrender. I'm not withholding. Tell somebody, I'm not withholding. Do not withhold anything. It's time to surrender everything in totality to God. It's not time to say, no, no, I can't do it. Everything, surrender them to God. And when you surrender everything to God, 
God to come through for you. God will be able to speak in your situation. God will be able to exalt you. God will be able to lift you because you have given it unto you. Amen. Amen. The problem sometimes with why we don't move forward is because we keep holding to certain things that our country. Mm -mm. When you give it to him, amen, amen. then he will know how to deal with it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. I welcome you today's service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. On behalf of Prophetess Miriam, I welcome you to this service. And I appreciate each one of you that has made it through to this service. Amen. And I just want to say thank you to the entire leadership this morning. I appreciate you so much. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord lift you up in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Today, prophetess is not with us. He's out doing that which God has called her to do more. Amen. Amen. She's in Congo. She's in Mumbashi. She's ministering. As I minister now, she's also ministering in Mumbashi. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. She's called to Baola. And she's on that assignment of breaking orders. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you this morning. But before I even encourage you, you know, I love my Bibles very much. I have my Bible with me. Hallelujah. And I want to see you lift your Bible in the house this morning. Do we have Bibles in the house? Amen. Can you somebody wave the Bible in the house? I don't want to go up to my Bible to talk about my did place. Amen. You keep replacing your clothes and everything around you, but you do not replace the Bible. Why? Aren't you proud of you what God has done in your lives? I'm in the habit of replacing my Bibles every six months. Hallelujah. Sometimes the Spirit is even every three months. Sometimes every time I walk into a shop, I want just to buy a Bible. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. In this month of grace, in this month, the fifth month of the year, it's a month of grace. Amen. And I want to preach it from a certain angle without even defining what grace is all about. Mm. But I want to speak, may the month of grace be your month in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 May that which you don't deserve come your way. Amen. May it be a month of unmerited favor upon your life. As you walk in this month, may God come through for you. Amen. If you have forgotten that he's your God, in this month, may he come in your situation and wake you up and tell you come back to the house of God. Amen. Because it is a month of grace. It is a month of waking up souls that are sleeping. It is a month of waking up people that are running away from the presence of God. It is a month of assuring you that he is still God. Amen. Hallelujah somebody. Amen. He is God in your situation no matter what you are going through. Amen. Amen. And I've entitled my message as it is it's a matter of grace. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. It is a what? A matter of grace or it is just by his grace. Amen. 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 And as I speak and I exhort you and I encourage you, I want to look upon one character in the Bible, a great man in the Bible, a great in a Bible, but this great man reached a point where he gave up. Mm. This man had seen the hand of God upon his life. This man had seen God's faith upon his life. This man had seen God do great things upon his life. Mm -hmm. But there came a time 
when this man came up on God. What am I talking about this morning? Never look away from the presence of God. Amen. Just because you have seen a fly going so past you. Yes. I know somebody. Yes. And I want to tell somebody, most of the time when we look off the face of God, it takes a fly to take you away from the presence of God. It takes a fly to instill fear in you. It takes a fly. In case you don't, if you don't know what a fly is, Kalunish. Hello, somebody. Kalunish, if you can't be able to No one so up with that. Whatever you forgot about what God has been doing in your life and what God has done in your life. I want to encourage somebody. Yes, you can fall down. Yes, you can come down. Yes, you can go down. But be able to arise. Amen, Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. In this month, I want to look at people and I want to see people that are able to arise. No matter the situation that they have gone through. Great men in the Bible have fallen. Great men in the Bible have come to a point where they have given up. If they have given up, I want to ask you, who are you? I know somebody. Amen. Who are you also? The times when things come your way and you give up and you think God has given up on you. The problem that we have is that we forgot who God is and where God has brought us and where God is taking us and we forget the promises of God upon our life. And we start concentrating on these challenges that is before us. We started concentrating on this fly that is before us. Just a fly. Mm. Mm. Don't you ever just tell them, just a fly. Just a fly. I want to emphasize that a fly, a fly, a fly, a fly. No matter what God has done to you, sometimes when a fly comes in your atmosphere, you forgot about who God is. Mm -hmm. There was a man in the Bible that God answered and did great things for. And sometimes we want to relate and think this man was a superhuman. Hello, somebody. This man had seen the power of God upon his life. We want to believe he was a super, superhuman. We want to believe probably he was an angel. Probably want to believe he was a breed beyond this earth. But there came a time when just a fly appeared before him. And he ran away from the presence of God. Mm. He was a great prophet. Lawrence. Take charge. I want us to read, read Kings 1, First Kings 1, 1 to 8. I want just to, exp to explain to you how this great man of God simply forgot what God did for him. Just because the fly appeared before him. And I want to emphasize a fly. Tell your neighbor a fly. A fly. First Kings chapter number one, verse one to eight. The word of the Lord says, Now King David was old, advanced in years. First Kings, first Kings. Yes. One chapter nineteen. First Kings chapter number nineteen, verse one to eight. The word of the Lord says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. I want someone to say, Ahab. 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 Told Jezebel. Told Jezebel. And I want you, in your spirit, those of you that are underlining and are writing, I want you to write all in capital letters, right? Capital A, capital L, and capital L. Amen. I want somebody to say, Oh. oh. Have you heard? Oh, fiance. Do you remember fiance? Fiance. Who told Jezebel fiance? Ha, ah, the king. Hello, somebody. Mm. The king told his wife, oh. And that's why I want us to zero in. 
and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also, how he had executed all the prophets with this word. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. Hallelujah. Continue, continue, continue. And went to Bathsheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servants there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a bloom tree, and he prayed that he might die, and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise. And eat because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights, as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want you to listen very well. King Ham told the wife, Oh, he must have sat down with the wife and told her, Oh. I know somebody. And he must have said, my wife, sit here, sit here, sit here. I want to tell you. Who was this king? King Ham was the king of Israel, the northern part of Israel. And King Ham believed in the mighty God of Israel. Maybe you don't know who he was. He believed in Yahweh. He believed in the true God. But he was married. Jezebel. I know somebody. Amen. He was married to Jezebel and because he was married to Jezebel, he came to a point of compromise. Amen. I know somebody. Amen. He came to a point of what? A compromise. That was a problem. Some of us, we are married to problems. And every time you marry a problem, a problem will be Am I speaking to somebody? A problem will do what? Give birth to a problem. God says, do not mix yourself and marry yourself with non-believers. Even more, I had yoga kachinja. Hallelujah. I had yoga kachinja. You better ask King Solomon. Amen. King Solomon had a good beginning, but a poor ending because he loved fallen women. And as the fallen women came, they are God. And then they came, they made him start worshipping other gods. And God, the God I know doesn't want you to worship any other God apart from him. He's a jealous God. Amen. I'm speaking to you. Amen. My Oprah can be knowing a woman has power. <laughs> a woman has certain power that can reduce a man to a nobody. Amen. And in this situation, the king had got married to this woman that was so powerful and came with his foreign God. And the Bible says this woman actually funded the false prophets. The 850 prophets that were in the northern of Israel were funded and fed and taken care of by Jezebel. I know somebody. He looked after them. And now, there came a time when his husband came and told him what Elijah had done. So he came and said, come here. I shall tell you all. Oh, my wife, sit here. Sit here, sit here. And she sat next to the husband. And she started listening very well. I want to tell you all oh, what Elijah has done. This Elijah stood in my praises and predicted that there shall be a dove. 
shall be a drought for three and a half years. And so it was. And it came to pass. And after three years, he came back and prayed, and there was rain. And the woman, Jezebel, was listening and said, Go on, go on, go on, tell me all. And I'm telling you all. It takes the grace of God, nothing else. It's not a superhuman being. You and I are not superhuman beings, but we are just human beings. And this, this, this person here, Elijah, who told the king was telling everything. He told him all. And he goes on to say, when there was drought, there was a poor woman who provided food to Elijah. And this poor woman had reached a point when she had the last meal. That last meal was all she had. She had reached the point of dying. Death. Hello, somebody. Amen. And she was preparing the last meal. And when God sent Elijah from that brook, because it had run dry, to a woman, a widow of that, to that, for that nature, to go home and be taken care of. And when Elijah reached there, this woman was able to give. May you be able to give and invest in the things of God, no matter what it takes. When this woman invested the last thing that she had, God came through for her. She never lay out. The Bible says, our all never lay out. May you never run out of your all because you have invested in the things of God. May your business never come to a standstill because you have invested in the things of God. May joy in your marriage never come to a standstill because you have invested in the kingdom of God. May that which you desire must never come to a standstill because this widow had reached a point where things came to a standstill. And she was saying, today in the night, bigger, it will be the last time. And suddenly, a man of God appears and okay, yeah, go for it. No, no, um, pay up, and I can take um, pang, you know, cool. Hello, someone. And she said, no, what I have is last. When I eat me and my son will be dead. I said, no, just give me trust, God. May you trust God in your situation. May you trust God in your business. May you trust God in your career. May you trust God in your finances. That even when you give the last thing that you have, the God says he will allow all to flow. Amen. Amen. When everyone is struggling, you will not struggle. When everyone is living at a point of starvation, there will be no starvation in you because you have given the very last part of you. And God will open doors, supernatural doors, that will come through for you. And it will continue flowing. This widow had a providence that continued flowing. And you know, this is what I'm telling you. King Ab was telling it to the wife and saying, Listen, there's a man of God. Hello, somebody. Amen. He had told the wife, Sit down. Let me tell you, this there was a man of God. And while it's, you know, while it's even Elijah was with, the, with this widow, the Bible says and it records that the son, the only son, I'm speaking to some to somebody here. Amen. The son that the widow had died. And when the woman or the widow complained to Elijah and says, Iwe, what you intend to do? Do I not know what? I want to pay an extension. Amen. Amen. The only son now is dead, has died. And I'm told the Bible says, Elijah beat the son. And I went to the upper room and laid down on him three times. And life came back to that boy. Everything that has died in your situation, may the Lord resurrect it for you. Yeah. May the Lord resurrect your marriage. Yeah. May the Lord resurrect your career. Yeah. May the Lord resurrect your finances. Yeah. As you give it up to him, as you go back to him and remind him, may he come and resurrect that dead situation in your life. That last hope, that last son, that last word that you may have, May God turn it around in the abundance flow. May it work for you. May it work for your children. May it work for your family. And you know, listen, listen. This is what Elijah was telling this Jezebel. And this king was literally testifying to the powers of God. What God can do. Watch out. Amen. Now,
tahun fa dena wat content ke tu kama na ka fwa ya ka mula bi ka poku ko ka bu what is it that has died in your life that god can do for you o ku bika pofio mu ne fire life returns to you may that which has not been moving in your life be returned back to you in jesus mighty name you know we we are trying to describe we are trying to describe what this man did and the bible says this man at one point challenged king ah and told him bring your prophets and see who which is the true god amen that you worship you can read that one i think um, in first kings 18:1 to 40 he challenged a uh, a uh, 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 king ah and says please let us stand before god and see if god will answer us by fire bring your prophets and king ah brought 850 in total of prophets and he was one bow peter amen one bow peter and the bible says they cried the whole day and nothing happened and when elijah prayed fire came down and god answered him and he was able to slay and of somebody all the 850 prophets I, i'm just explaining i'm just explaining i'm just explaining what king ahab was telling the wife and as he was telling the wife and testifying to the power of god this man this woman reached the point and i want to approach to read that one again i want us to read that one again first kings 19 1 to 4 I want us to read and I want us to understand it very well. 